All right, let's get to work. Let's do it. Here comes a long email. Dear Neven Max, I recently watched a movie called Clueless about a rich teenage girl named Cher Horowitz living in Beverly Hills with her friends. Cher only lived with her father, who was a famous litigator. Cher's ex-stepbrother, Josh, was basically the only person who realized that she had a problem. He called her vain and selfish, and said her only direction she had in life was going towards the mall. Towards the beginning of the movie, Cher received bad grades in two of her classes. Instead of working harder to try to earn better grades, she played matchmaker and got two teachers in those classes to start a relationship so that they would raise her grade. When she noticed how happy her two teachers became, and how happy it made her, she decided to go back to the community and try to do this more. Her subject was for a new student, Ty Frazier. Cher and her best friend, Dion Davenport, gave Ty a makeover and introduced her to the new popular crowd. Originally, Ty was interested in a skateboarder named Travis Birkenstock, but Cher stared her towards a more rich and popular boy named Elton. This matchmaking plot failed and Elton was actually interested in Cher and tried to seduce her. Elton deserted to her sketchy part of town after a party, and Cher had to call Josh to come pick her up. Even after getting robbed, Cher was the most concerned about her designer dress, which had been ruined by the robber when she was forced to lay on the ground. Another new student arrived at their school, but this time it was an attractive, well-dressed boy named Christian. Cher began to date Christian, but Dion's boyfriend brought it to their attention that Christian was actually gay. Eventually, Cher's popularity plan for Ty worked way too well. Ty's popularity has surpassed her own. Cher failed her driver's test but could not negotiate the result like she did with her teachers. When she returned home, she found Ty and Josh hanging out, which did not sit right with her. Ty asked for Cher's help in getting Josh, but Cher told her no. After Cher and Ty fought, Cher reflected on her own life and her priorities. She realized that she loved Josh and began to truly do something good for someone other than herself. At, at the end of the movie, the two teachers Cher set up were married. Ty and Travis were in love, and Cher ended up with Josh. While watching it, I thought the movie was simply a sugary coming-of-age romantic comedy. But I think there's something more under the surface. Why exactly? I was hoping you could help me figure it out. Help me figure out why I'm being catfished by this movie. Well, maybe it's a satire. Oh my god, it's a satire. Well, let's call her up and let her know what we found out. Mm. Hey. hey! Hey! So, we read your email and we're gonna come help you figure all this out. Where are you? Beverly Hills. Alright, we'll hop on a plane as soon as possible we'll try to figure all this out. We'll be there real soon. See you soon. Bye. Peace. So, we watched the movie we think you're right. There's definitely something under the surface here. It's a satire. There's a handful of satirical elements that Amy Heckerling uses. Incongruity is probably the first one used in the movie. That's when items are presented that are out of place or absurd in relation to their surroundings. At the beginning, Cher says she has a completely normal life. But while she says this, she is picking out an outfit from a computer designed to match her with the perfect outfit from a rotating closet. Heckling also used burlesque, which is a ridiculous exaggeration of language. Oh, is that like how the kids are depicted as lazy and uneducated, yet use sophisticated language? Yes, exactly. She also uses reversal which presents the opposite of the normal order. This happens when Cher basically determines her own grades instead of her teachers. Basically the whole movie is just using exaggeration, which represents something beyond normal bounds that usually is, becomes ridiculous and its own fault can be seen. She uses this exaggeration in the teenager's behavior. She also used a lot of irony, which, you, which is used to show the difference between appearance and reality. During basically the whole movie, Cher calls everyone else clueless, but she's really the clueless one. You notice that she failed her driver's test and she didn't even realize that Christian was gay? So would her using her outfit computer be irony too? Because it showed what Cher thought and then what, she, what was actually happening? Yeah, I'd say so. We should call Amy Heckerling to figure out everything else. We ha have the satirical techniques down, but we need to learn everything else. You know what? I'll shoot her a message. Hey, Amy Heckerling. It's Neven Max from Catfish. We would love to meet up with you and talk about your movie. Get back to us ASAP. Our number is 867-5309. Thank you. So good. Now we wait. Hi, is this Amy Heckerling? It is. I can meet up. I'm in Beverly Hills. Okay, awesome. So are we. Just give us an address and we'll meet up with you as soon as we can. See ya. Hi, this is Nathan Max from Catfish. Do you have a minute to talk to us? Sure, come on in. 
huge one. So, Amy, we want to talk about your movie Clueless. We think there's something more to the story, and we want you to help us figure it out. I'm not sure I want to completely spoil the fluffy exterior of the movie, but to help out the fans of the film, I guess I can spare the details. Okay, so Rue has some questions for you, but we'll start off with the most basic one. Is Clueless a satire? It is. Sweet, we're right, guys. So what current event at the time of this movie really affected you and made you change the movie a little bit? At the time, technology was becoming a lot more common for people. An example of this being cell phones out at the dinner table. Mm. Everyone is basically glued to their phones. I also showed the growing laziness of students when Cher read the Cliff Notes for a uh, book. Oh, the Cliff Notes? The Cliff Notes for her book. Yeah. Instead of reading the actual books, she was she did not prepare for her debates either. Um, mm, we don't do that either. Mm -mm, no way. No, never. I tried to represent the time period and the items that were important and topics of debate. There were drugs, dis drugs discussions about sexuality and the idea that teens do not care about the news. Mm. Um, well, why should we trust what's in your movie? What makes you credible? Well, I went and spent time in Beverly Hills High Schools to ensure that I was accurately portraying teens of the 1990s. Mm. So are you satirizing those very teens? Well, in general, yes. More specifically, I was targeting those teens that, were, that are wealthy and privileged but vain. What is the movie's message, really? Is it that money and popularity aren't everything? Yes, exactly! The movie is using satire to exaggerate how teenagers act, and I hoped that it would might make some teenagers realize their own faults. Sure, money and popularity and clothes might be exciting and fun, but family and friends you make in life are what are really matter. I hoped that when the viewers watch Cher come to this realization, they would too. Have you received any criticism? You know, you basically made fun of teenagers the whole time? I have, yes. Since it's loosely based off a Jane Austen novel, some people think it's too much of a dumbed-down version of the book. Some people think it's too far away from Jane Austen's world to be considered a good version. Well, that makes sense. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, it really helped me understand the movie better. Yeah, no problem. Hey, how are you? I'm good. I've realized that the film is actually kind of relevant to today. Really? Why do you say that? The depiction of teens in the movie was not that far off. The kids at my school have definitely read Cliff Notes or Spark Notes instead of actually reading the book. They refer to the movie adaptation of a book instead of the actual book and they are glued to their cell phones. However, anyone who spends a large portion of their time with teens will know this movie is highly exaggerating the behavior of the average teenager. I understand why Amy Heckerling did this though. She wanted to show how shallow and superficial some teenagers are in order to reform the others and keep them from being this vain. Bye. 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 It's perfect, perfect just as it is. You know what I think? That we can agree that the friendship between you and me ended up so nastily, but now we can finally say that it won't just end up this way, cause our friendship is here to stay.